Happy Mercury Day, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Star Watch, which is a weekly astrological transit report. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jane. I'm so happy to have everybody here, though. So let's go ahead and dive right into this chart. Now, this week, we have the activation of Sagittarius. All right, this is a beautiful week. There's a lot of Jupiterian energy being introduced into the chart. So let's go ahead and get started. So as of uh, Wednesday, I was going to say Monday, I mean Wednesday, November 16th, we officially have Venus coming into Sagittarius now. Similarly, Mercury is going to come into Sagittarius tomorrow. Okay, so these planets are in this beautiful trine. They're kind of coming off of this trine energy with Jupiter. You may have noticed over the past couple of days, if you were feeling more optimistic, if you were feeling more like, yes, I can really do this, perhaps more energized, you know, this certainly was a major player. But Jupiter is not completely off the table right now because yes, the sun, as he makes his way, he's at 24 degrees as of Wednesday, He's going to hit 25, 26, 27, 28 degrees. So like the next week, really, the sun will also be in a beautiful trine with Jupiter as well. So this generally is just going to be a good week to like really believe that you can do it, you know, and to take the leap. And I've been talking about, you know, that we've been incrementally taking these steps one by one, doing these, you know, really good things, but we come to a point where we're going to have to really start taking on a lot more. We're going to have to take those bigger leaps of faith. We're going to have to like make the risk or, or make the commitment, take the risk. And we're coming into that environment like right now. Okay. As Venus and Mercury are activating Sagittarius, it's, it's time. And we are going to have next week, I'll talk a little bit more about it, but we are going to have this new moon in Sagittarius as well, as well uh, which is happening on the 23rd, okay, at one degree of Sagittarius. So if you have planets at the one degree, give or take a few degrees of a fire sign, this is going to be especially beautiful for you. And, and chances are there will be some good things happen, maybe just in your mind, but also maybe in your life. Maybe there will be some announcement that is made or some opportunity that presents itself that could take your life in a new direction or at least up level, up a level in some way, shape or form. So Venus and Mercury being very close here. Now, Mercury, remember, is still he, he in Sagittarius. He is in detriment. Okay, because he's the ruler of Gemini. So over here in Sag, he's, you know, he is challenged a little bit. The good news is that Mercury is very versatile. Okay, as, as much as a fallen planet can be challenging, like if Saturn is in his fall or detriment, or if the sun is in detriment, we can feel that a lot more. But Mercury is so flexible. His challenge in Sagittarius, though, is getting more big minded. All right. He is going to be challenged to get out of his little day to day operations, analytical, collecting information, connecting the dots kind of mind and go big and start to see. I always say this analogy wrong, like see the trees for the forest or the forest for the tre the trees for the forest, right? We want, we want to see the whole forest is what I, I guess I'm trying to say. We want to get out of just seeing single trees zoom out and be like, oh, wow, there is so much more. There may be an educational endeavor for you right now. If you are considering starting a course, starting a class, writing your own course, becoming a teacher or a student, either way, this is a highly advantageous time for that, especially if you have strong, um, or if Sagittarius is in a house, like the third house or the ninth house, 11th house, even the 12th house, sixth house, that kind of thing. Um, it's a really, really great time to take on new studies. So that's good. <laughs> that's always a good thing. We also have Mars over here in a beautiful trine. Now Mars, remember, is going retrograde. So he's kind of going backward, getting closer to this 19th degree. 
And he is offering, like this particular aspect is offering us a lot of discipline. You know, we have the ability to work maybe a little bit longer or to be more structured, or we have the mind to take care of things. Perhaps our executive function is enhanced a little bit. I know some people really struggle with executive function. Like if you have some neurodivergent things going on and I completely understand, um, but this may be a good time to maybe like there's support there. So if there are things going on around the house that you've been meaning to take care of, it might be a little bit easier for you to be able to take care of it. Um, Mars is offering so much support for us to like, to really get things in order. And even though Gemini can be really chaotic, it's a mutable sign. It's Mercury ruled. I think Mercury energy generally can be highly chaotic. Uh, don't tell my Virgos that I said that <laughs> they don't like to think of themselves as chaotic, but they're still ruled by Mercury and they're still immutable signs. So, um, but it does have that tendency to be, you know, a little all over the place, but when he retrogrades, it's like, well, let's take all of this all over the place energy or aspects of our lives and let's at least put the pieces of the puzzle together. So at least we have some semblance of an idea of what we're looking at. So we're not, you know, dealing with little itty bitty bits of information that aren't truly connecting properly. Okay. He wants us to have a whole picture because Saturn wants us to be able to use the big picture, to use the information. Remember the motto for Capricorn is I use. He doesn't want to just have it. That's pointless. Let's do something with it. So now you can, whatever your endeavors are, whether you're embarking upon a new relationship or building a new business or starting some kind of a new venture or traveling or whatever the case is, it's not just doing it for doing its sake. It's doing it for the sake of some greater purpose. There's a goal in mind. Of course, Saturn is like, well, we got to have a goal. We got to have a reason. We got to have some kind of an end point in mind. You know, we have to know when we've achieved it or when we've attained it. Otherwise we're just wandering around aimlessly. And Saturn doesn't like that. <laughs> He's not going to allow that. So right now I think is good. It's good for business owners. It's good for people who are trying to accomplish something with spouses. It's good for people who are trying to communicate with other people as well. I think with Venus coming into Sagittarius, now Mercury in Sagittarius can have a punch to it. We know that Sagittarius, the, uh, the stereotype is like, they don't have a filter. They just kind of say whatever comes to their mind. Yeah. Cause their opposite is Gemini. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course, that's the reason why. Um, but I think there's usefulness to that. They're not going to hold back. They're not going to lie. They're not going to be manipulative. Like people are just going to say it like it is. It's just like, well, this is what's going on. This is what I think. This is how I feel. Blah. And yes, it can be a tough pill to swallow sometimes, but that can also be the best thing that ever happened to you. Cause then at least you're not like questioning and wondering well, what do they think of me? And well, what do they think of what I put out there? And it just, it's just blunt. It's obvious. You have a lot to work with, with that. And when that energy comes into relationships, Venus, or even money issues with Venus, um, it's like, let's just talk it out. Let's sit down and figure it out. Let's, well, let's not beat around the bush here. We don't have to hold our feelings in. Let's just be direct. And even with your bank account, like, don't be afraid to look at your bank account. Don't be afraid to look at your investments. Don't be afraid to look at your portfolio. Like, where are you at? Where do you stand? Where is everything? Because if you don't know where everything is, if you haven't taken stock or taken inventory, how do you know what you need to order? How do you know where you need to go and, and where you need to build? Sagittarius wants all the things. He wants to experience all the great stuff, but if you're just kind of wandering around aimlessly, ha like, well, you know, there has to be some quality of consolidation to some degree. All right. So if you're in like a planning mode, this is a great time to plan. If you're in a strategy mode or 
you know, kind of a new creative brainstorming mode. All of those things are highly supported this week. I, I just love this Jupiterian influence. Now, Mercury and Venus are going to come off of Jupiter. They're already kind of separated enough over the next couple of days. They'll, they'll move off, but the sun is still going to be an aspect and everything's going to be in a Jupiter world sign. So Jupiter is very much at play right now. He's actually the strongest planet in the chart sitting at a plus eight. You guys know we've had Saturn sitting at like plus eight, plus nine, plus 10 for like months now. So Saturn is kind of coming down, getting notched down a little bit. So when Jupiter and Mercury are really strong, our minds, our desires, our ambitions, like there's really nothing stopping us. There's not a lot of blockage because they're like, beating Saturn and Saturn seems to be much more supportive of stuff. He's helping us to have that firm footing so we can reach higher. So it's going to be a good week. I genuinely believe that we're coming out of the electricity of, uh, not only just Scorpio season, cause yes, the sun will come in next Tuesday or when 22nd, it's next Tuesday, right? The 20, the 22nd the sun is going to come into Sagittarius we're coming off of the eclipses, coming out of Scorpio, and like we can breathe here. <laughs> I think Virgo season, Libra season, Scorpio season, there was so much condensed energy. Even back with Cancer and Leo season, there was just a lot of movement happening. We had very chaotic retrograde season. Um, as we make our way into December, obviously Neptune and Chiron are going to go direct. So the only outer planet that will be retrograde by the end of the year is Uranus and that's it. So we're starting to feel more and more week by week, more forward motion. And that's being kicked off by Sagittarius season, which is going to be just a really beautiful season all in all. So I'm going to leave you with that. All right. I hope you have an amazing week. You definitely deserve it. I know that you have been doing a lot of the work you have been hunkering down and trying to get your mind and your spirit and your emotional state right for the sake of where you want to go and this is the time all right thank you all so much i love you have an amazing week and i'll talk to you soon